Good evening, and uh, welcome to the uh, regularly scheduled Bothell Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, February 26th. Uh, we'll call to order tonight's session. Note that all commissioners, uh, with the exception of Patrick Cabe, are present. We expect Patrick shortly. Uh, seeing as we have some guests in the audience tonight, we'll open up the opportunity for public comments on items not related to the agenda. Very good. With that, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is approval of the minutes. And I believe we have minutes uh, to approve from October 23rd. I'll look for a motion for approval of the minutes from October 23rd. I make a motion we approve the minutes of the meeting from October 23rd, 2013. Is there a that. second? I would second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, note that it passes with all uh, commissioners that are present this evening. Next, we will move on to the approval of the minutes from November 6th of 2013. Motion to approve the minutes from November 6, 2013. I will second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, note that it passes with all commissioners present. And uh, lastly, we will uh, take a motion for the minutes uh, to approve the minutes from February 12th of 2014. Make a motion to approve the minutes of February 12th, 2014. Second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Note that it passes unanimously with all commissioners present. So uh, moving down the agenda, we'll see as there is no new business. Uh, we will now open the public hearing on the 2015 periodic plan and code update, specifically the initial review of the natural environment element and implementing critical areas, regulations, and Good to see you, Bruce. I'd like to introduce you, Mr. Bruce Backburn, and take it away. Thank you very much. I got a brief presentation I'll provide to the commission. As the chair identified, this is the initial planning commission hearing on the natural environment element and critical area regulations. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Growth Management Act just to kind of get us refreshed on what we're doing. Essentially, the Growth Management Act was an initiative of the people that was approved in 1990. And the GMA, which is also the Growth Management Act, was um, basically enacted under state law. So it is state law, revised code of Washington in Chapter 3670A. The GMA is administered by the Washington State Department of Commerce under the Washington Administrative Code, WAC, Chapter 365-195. Further, the GMA requires counties and cities subject to the Act, which includes the City of Bothell, to adopt comprehensive plans and implementing regulations which are consistent with the Act. And that includes, of course, adopting a comprehensive plan containing certain mandatory elements, plus optional elements, which is the City of Bothell has done as well, that are enacted at the uh, jurisdiction's discretion, and uh, also adopting critical area regulations that regulate wetlands, geologically hazardous areas, Critical, critical aquifer recharge areas, frequently flooded areas, and wildlife habitat areas. There are other influences that we have to be aware of, however, and that includes the multi-county planning policies issued by the Puget Sound Regional Council through the Vision 2040 plan, King and Snohomish County countywide planning policies, the Shoreline Management Act, which is also a regulation underneath the Revised Code of Washington, the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, NPDES Phase II permit, basically that's a part of the Clean Water Act, the Federal Clean Water Act that is implemented through the states. Certainly the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, and their administration of the National Flood Insurance Program, or NFIP, and of course the Endangered Species Act, or ESA, and there's a Section 4D rule that protects Chinook salmon within our area. The natural environment element his purpose is to expand upon the community's commitment to stewardship of natural resources as expressed in the city's vision statement and to provide a policy basis for city's decisions which affect the natural environment. The natural environment element is not a required element under the Growth Management Act, but the Growth Management Act contains the following goal concerning the environment, and that is to protect 
the environment and enhance the state's high quality of life, including air and water quality, and the availability of water. Further, the natural environment element contains policies regarding features such as critical areas, which are wetland streams, have wildlife habitat, forested hillsides, open space, air quality, and what will be new for 2015, climate change and conservation of resources. Staff is proposing a number of amendments to the natural environment element that would include a general update of the element's background information and data, updating the goals and policies, primarily policies, only one goal really gets uh, added, essentially, that reflect changes that have happened to the community since the last update, 2004, and recognize completed activities, for example, the update of the Bothell Shorelines Master Program and the adoption of the Greater Lake Washington Watershed Re Salmon Recovery Plan, which is the WIRA plan, sometimes it's also called as well. Further, the uh, proposal is to add a number of policies and actions to implement climate change policies and actions as managed by the King County countywide planning policies. That's one of the things we have to do with our update. As well as we add a number of policies and actions from the utilities and conservation element that are kind of anticipation of a staff proposal that would remove the conservation policies and actions from the utilities and conservation element and relocate those conservation policies within a new natural environment element section called conservation of resources. One of the key features, of course, of the natural environment element is the critical area regulations, and that's also a requirement under the Growth Management Act. Now, those regulations are implemented within the Botham Municipal Code, or BMC, Chapter 1404. Now, the purpose of the critical area regulations is to regulate certain features of the landscape whose regulation has been identified as being critical to the health and well-being of the citizens of the states. And those features are wetlands and geologically hazardous areas, frequently flooded areas, critical aquifer recharge areas, and fish and wildlife habitat areas. The critical area regulations contain specific regulations that are applied to development applications and other activities which are near or within the areas identified above. Now, again, the natural environment element is primarily but not exclusively implemented through the curricular area regulations. Now, staff is proposing an limited number of revisions to the curricular area regulations because the curricular area regulations is currently in full compliance with the current provisions of the Growth Management Act. Further, the city has undertaken two amendments to the growth of uh, the curricular area regulations in 2009 and 2010, which has kept the city's regulations, curricular area regulations, kind of up to date, if you will. Now, the proposed amendments that you have before you this evening are all within the frequently flooded areas regulations of 1404 700 to 760, and they include revisions to implement a request from the Federal Emergency Management Agencies to make certain changes to the frequently flooded areas provisions of 1404-700-760. This is one of those outside influences identified. FEMA has the administration of the National Flood Insurance Program. We also have some improvements, uh, some amendments proposed that would make the frequently flooded section more in line or consistent with the recently adopted frequently flooded regulations of the Shoreline Master Program. Now, the Shoreline Master Program was just adopted in 2013 by the Council, and essentially what that does, that also has some regulations on frequently flooded areas. We need to have those regulations in sync. We can't have them inconsistent with each other. That concludes my presentation. I will note that we do apologize because the packets didn't come up with the nice colors that we were hoping for. Um, we're working to get that adjusted. But at uh, this time, any questions the ca council, uh, commission may have or you want to open up public hearing is just fine with us. Thank you. I think at this time, if there's any points of clarification for Mr. Blackburn. Commissioner Booth? I will have some questions on... Um, on goals, policies, and actions, is this the time to bring them forward? I think just generally at this point, before we hear any public comment, any clarifications on the presentation, uh, or any direct questions? Uh, no. At this time, we'll uh, open up the uh, podium for uh, public comment. And uh, seeing we has, have a couple of folks in, in the audience tonight, the opportunity to come up and uh, uh, engage in uh, or, or present your points or uh, present your discussion. Uh, we ask you to come up, you state your name, whether or not you're a resident of the city of Bothell. And um, tonight we'll, we'll offer five to seven minutes for uh, folks to uh, 
to uh, provide discussion for us to consider when we open up for deliberation. At this time, we'll open up for specific discussion uh, between uh, the commissioners and staff on uh, the presentation and the package that was received. Commissioner Gasno, no, no. Nope. Commissioner Stahl, not yet. Yeah, Commissioner Booth, yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, so um, appreciate the presentation as well as a very extensive packet, Bruce. It was a lot of material in there, and uh, just as last week. I learned a new word, sewerage. Uh, this week I learned another word, and that was adronomous. I had to go, an, what was that? Anadromous. Anadromous, okay. Yeah. And I had to go running for my dictionary. But actually it was defined there in, in the back of the packet. I, when I finally got to the back, I saw that. But I didn't know that word. Maybe, maybe some of the other uh, fishermen on the com commission knew that word. But uh, I didn't realize that that was... Um, the type of fish migrating from salt water to fresh water. Yeah, essentially in the simplest terms, it's a fish that includes part of its life cycle in salt water. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, I have a, um, a couple of high-level questions. First of all, starting with the goals. Uh, I, I did think the first three goals, this is on page NE4, uh, I think they were very well written, and I, I have no changes to them at all. I, I, so I, I really liked how uh, they were, were written previously. Uh, both the uh, goal one, the har achieving a harmonious relationship. Uh, goal two, a community-wide stewardship of natural r resources. And then goal three, on open space corridors and uh, providing lands useful for recreation, habitat, trails, et cetera. So I, uh, my only question about goals, and that is because um, I've felt so good about the, those three, the fourth goal that you're proposing adding to reduce the rate of consumption of natural resources, any G4. To me, I'm, I'm wondering, could that actually be just, I'm not saying it's not important. I did have a question about it. If we're going to reduce the rate of consumption, then do we need to have some type of metrics around what our current rate is so that we would know if we reduced it? And would that be better, actually better suited as an action rather than elevated to um, a position of a fourth goal? Yes, well, of course, you have the goal, which is a broad definition of what right. you'd like to achieve. And if you go further into the document, there are some policies that talk about the methodology that will use, be used to measure the amount of, we'll say, greenhouse gas emission within the city of Bothell. And that's basically a regional effort that will be led by King County that will essentially uh, come up with a methodology for all jurisdictions to employ that will identify whether we're meeting that goal or not. And it's primarily going to be one of those things where it's, okay, how many miles of travel you have and things like that, because you mm -hmm. can't really measure the air quality in every single jurisdiction because of the equipment is so sophisticated. And this is one of those goals that came right out of the King County countywide planning policies. So the county is recommending to us not only the language of this goal, but that it be stated as a goal, not as an yes, it's as one a of the goals, tactic, yeah. if you will. Yes, it's one of the goals in the countywide plan. It's one of the new goals. Uh, they came up with just last year regarding, uh, well, basically greenhouse gas emission and climate change. Okay. All right. Um, and then my other, my other kind of initial question, and I may have some later, but um, had to do with um, since at the towards the end of the packet, we there was a section on development, and I think I can. You may know this, but I'll see if I can find it for you. It's it's mentioned. Um, Excuse me. On page page forty six, development regulations. So this is really in the back. And this is under the the BMC rev. Um, and there's quite an extensive uh, set of new language that's added here on page forty six and forty seven regarding um, development, which I was glad to see um, because I, as I know from our city and and that there's not only the need for conservation of resources and care for our water and our and and that side of the equation but we have um a number of developments that have are trying to coexist with this flow of water through it whether it's on a floodplain or through ravines or off of hillsides into housing developments and i just want to see us have as a as a good goal going forward um, some real sound policies around how to um, 
maybe do a better job going forward in terms of our development interaction with the natural uh, environment. So I, I support having this language included, and I guess I'm wondering, do we want to bring back as perhaps a goal or kind of one of the things that we're really trying to do with this element is have a healthy relationship between the de the environment and the development that Bothell is, is proposing, both for residential as well as our, uh, our business constituents. Yes, and in fact, one of the things in the natural environment element, you, as you kind of go through, there is a lot of policies that deal not just with the water body, but also some of the areas outside the water bodies. And that's one of the things that talk about some of the best management practices we want to implement with development and those kind of items. Uh, essentially what happens is since 2004 we've had a lot of changes, uh, particularly in the area of low impact development, which is a was at that time was a brand new thing that was just coming out. Now it's becoming pretty, it's kind of in its, its late elementary school stage, so it's becoming much more uh, readily available for us to use. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of things in the natural environment. We can certainly augment them if you so desire. I think that, that my only point there is that as I went through the packet, I didn't see a whole lot of language on development until I got to the end. And that's where I'm just saying, could we kind of bring that forward as part of what we're trying to achieve? And maybe that's not, this is not the right um, element for that to be included, but I'm just asking the question. Yeah, and that's a good point because what we've done is we've only given you a piece of the Botham Municipal Code. Right. Uh, we haven't given you the design and construction standards where a lot of those things that you're talking about, low impact development, is actually implemented within that area. All we're talking about is the specific areas that are required by the Growth Management Act, which is you know, wetlands, wildlife, habitat, exactly. and those things. That's right. the only piece you got, but you're absolutely right. It's a much broader uh, arena that we could eventually could look into it. Okay, so I would ask that you maybe, um, as we look revisit this in a week or two, to see if there might be some way that the development could come a little bit earlier, either you know in our goals and actions as well as what we're going to reflect in the BMC. Because I think what you're adding there in, in 46 and 47 is fine. And then the last thing I'll bring up now, and then I I might want to bring um, some items up later, and that is um, there was quite a bit of language around the floodplain. And I think uh, it kind of was throughout the document, but I'm thinking particularly, uh, I saw it on page 46 again, but I'm really, it's, there's quite a lot of language around concern of the floodplain. And there's probably very good reason for that. Yes. Um, based upon the fact that we do have a number of floodplains, we have in our industrial parks and other um, development areas in floodplains, and we need to account for that. Right. Um, I didn't see as much language around. I'm calling. I'm, I called it flood versus flow, but the idea being that we Bothell has a lot of ridges and ravines and hillsides. They're not really floodplains, but they're places that have a lot of soil erosion, water erosion. Um, again, going into housing areas or whatever. And I would like to. Am I did I, or maybe I missed it, but I just didn't see as much language in there around those parts of Bothell. Where there are wa there's water flow, it probably wouldn't be defined as a floodplain, but how do we want to kind of regulate ourselves going forward into those areas? Yeah, and essentially what that is actually regulated by is by the Bothell surface, uh, um, basically b design and construction standards. And essentially what the city has done is we've implemented the 2005 Ecology Manual with a number of revisions to make it work for our jurisdiction. That's the primary area where we're talking about water flow, water quality, and those kind of things. And, of course, that's kind of one of those public works areas. But we can certainly provide you some kind of like a, a, a little quickie summary of what's going on within that one as well so you don't have to get, again, one of these big, huge packets because it's very thick. But that's basically one of the things that is to set up. Now, one of the things I kind of want to identify is that the reason we're making these changes to the frequently flooded provisions of the curricular regulations is this is a direct result as a, of a request from FEMA, essentially the Federal Flood Insurance Program. And the city of Bothell's got 45 to 50 uh, basically covered uh, property owners who do get Federal Flood Insurance. So what happens is the FEMA says, listen, we would like you to make some changes to your critical area regulations for frequently flooded areas. Now, that's the 100-year floodplain. 
exclusively. It doesn't include, you know, urban flooding might be, might be up the road or something like that. It's exclusively the FEMA 100-year the FEMA, FEMA floodplain. But when they ask us to make these changes, we're beholding to do that because it affects those 40-some-odd property owners who do rely upon federal flood insurance, basically sold through private uh, insurance companies, to protect themselves against a flood. Right. And that's basically why... Uh, essentially, even though staff thinks some of these definitions and the first part of the definitions don't work very well, we definitely want to include these yeah. because we want to continue to have that ability for people to purchase flood insurance. Right. I did see the Exhibit any one the yeah. FEMA document, and that that had uh, driven a lot of the language changes you're proposing, and I, and I uh, support that. Yeah. So those are the only questions and comments I had right now. Thank you. Blake, anything to yeah. discuss? Got to get back to my notes here. Uh, NEG4, um, the goal for it to reduce the rate of comp, uh, consumption of natural resources, it, it, it seems to me like that's in cross purposes with what we discussed last week and the week before that, where we're, we're going to be attempting to add 3,600 new uh, homes within the city. I mean, we're, we're saying we want to, re if I've read this correctly. Well, actually, one of the things you could look at this is the fact that one of the uh, strategies, we'll say, to reducing greenhouse gas emissions is to have more compact neighborhoods. Uh, so people can maybe just walk down the street to get to their restaurant or something like that. And that's that walkable cities. So actually, in many ways, those are not in conflict. Basically, the idea is that we're going to build up a little bit more in some areas. I don't want to get too much of that, but we're going to increase some densities here so people don't have to drive everywhere. So that is one of the strategies that uh, you know you kind of read about in some of the areas. Right, and that made sense to me, uh, but I just I didn't see that under... under uh any G4, and, yeah, and, and again, it might be... Well, and part of that is because these greenhouse gas emission reduction policies and goals kind of apply multi-element-wise. We may have a few things in our urban design element that reflect a few of the things you see here. In fact, we probably will. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where this is the first shot you see, right. and this, this element is probably ta carrying the bulk of those items, but there will certainly be other elements, including land use, that right. you may see a few little snippets here and there about the greenhouse gas emission program. Okay. Well, can, can I jump on that for a second? Um, while we're on NEG4, uh, the, so there were two parts about that that jumped out at me that I just wanted to speak to. Um, uh, one, one was similar to the uh, point that was raised by uh, Commissioner Stedman, uh, and that's just about the I, – I see the word consumption here, but there's this very important difference between consumption and efficiency. Like, if we wanted to reduce consumption, the easiest way to reduce consumption would be to just shut the city down, you know, decrease the population, send everybody to Kirkland. You know, I'm being a little facetious there, but the I don't want us to get over-focused on, on reducing consumption when we are trying to grow the city, we are trying to bring more people here, we are trying to, uh, you know, attract jobs. Um, I, somewhere, you know, I, I want to work in the concept of the group, about efficiency, you know, we, we want to be. It's not all about re just reducing the resources. We want to be. We want to grow the city. We just want to be more efficient in in their usage. Uh, and, and I don't. I mean, I know there's a lot of pages through it, so I don't want to go try to nitpick through them. But just when we're at the high level of talking about goals, that whole consumption versus efficiency and focusing on the efficiency. Um, and then there was another part of that about uh, with reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, that's that's definitely important. One of the the concerns that I've seen sometimes has been, it's very easy to. It, we want to make sure that um, we don't just outsource them. So you know, I, I've seen in other cities going through this situation where they reduce greenhouse gas emissions by just, you know, close down this factory and then move it 20 miles out of the city. And regionally, it doesn't reduce them, but it, you know, it helps them kind of gain the books. Um, and, and again, it, when, when we get into the specific details, uh, like I see over on um, NEP41 has, has a few, few more details that we can talk about. 
But uh, I, so can we get back and see if Blake has anything more to add? <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll get your turn here in a minute. <laughs> Uh, thank you. And actually, I, I, that's, a, that, that's pretty much where I was going was more efficiency or more um, ba a balanced approach as opposed to simply reducing the rate of consumption. So um, NEP6, city should consider all potential options when presented. I look at that and go, well, there may be some, some items that are potential, but they're not viable. And so maybe we ought to look at all reasonably viable options. I would agree that kind of jumped out. I just circled it. Why is this necessary to add that? So. Yeah. It was one of those things where it's kind of like this is a holdover, and the, the shoreline board made a slight tweak. Basically, well, we don't want to in, in, you know, exclude any possibility, so they added that. They were trying to emphasize it. So I'm just trying to make this consistent with the shoreline element sure. as well. I mean, I could. Uh, but reasonably viable, I think, is, I mean, it's the same, almost the same thing, basically. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, one of the questions that, I, that that popped up for me as I was reading through this under NEP 14, <clears throat> are there any other waterways in areas that we are potentially going to be annexing over the next, uh, you know, five, ten years? Uh, well, actually, that's Swamp Creek. That's within okay. our, uh, okay. you know, basically our movie area, our, our right. urban growth area. And that's kind of why I made sure and included that here. Got it. Okay. I don't know if there's any any, any other ones there. Um, just out of curiosity, do we are we involved in any wetland banking at all for any of the development that we're doing in downtown, or is that or, or is it not even necessary with uh, with the soils and the wetlands that we have down there? For most of the development downtown, it's not necessary. We okay. don't have to do that. And we have investigated some type of a wetland banking program. Unfortunately, what happens is that the standards and the the process that a city has to go through is very very detailed and very time consuming and frankly really expensive. Mm -hmm. And we just have never had the resources to spend the money to go into that type of a program. Now there is something called advanced mitigation programming and wetland uh, mitigation. And what you could do is in theory you could find a location in our Sammamish River Park which is probably the best place and do a whole bunch of advanced basically restoration and enhancement of those wetlands down there for a trade-off for some future project, uh, road project. We have not had to do that yet, most of our enhancements. And, you, of course, you've seen some of the – about half of that has already been enhanced due to some impacts that have happened in some other locations. And that's been kind of the, the approach we've taken. But, yeah, wetland mitigation banking, fee and lieu uh, type wetland mitigation uh, programs are very difficult and expensive and time-consuming to set up. Does the city have any um, thoughts, concepts, or whatever to to handle the wetlands in the Thrasher's Corner area that's on the basically southwest corner? Uh, in the Centennial Park? Right. Well, uh, yes, actually east of Centennial Park. Oh, a little bit, yeah. Well, yeah. and, you know, part of that is that some of this Centennial Park, when certainly what the city can has the ability to do there is to do some enhancement for maybe some advanced mitigation. Right. The other eastern portion of that is, of course, privately owned. Right. So it's like, okay, well, you can, you know, enhance your areas. One of the things about that park that makes enhancement in, you know, in Lewis stuff is that the wetlands there are actually are pretty highly categorized. In fact, it's a one with a really high habitat score. So it's really hard, you know, okay, you have this level of wetland, you want to take it up that much, you don't get as much credit if you have this level of wetland and take it up right. that way. But, you know, that's one of the features you have to do when you get into a really detailed type of analysis like that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then just out of curiosity, what is a fish passage culvert? Oh. I read that and I went. Oh. Yeah. Essentially, there's a couple different types of culvert. And in the past, what would happen is that they'd, they'd basically put a culvert in. It would be really small and it would be too high and the fish couldn't go through it. And what has happened is that there's been this new movement, if you would, to create fish passage culverts that maintain a stream flow so the fish doesn't have to jump up into a pipe that's only this deep. Well, they're not going to do that. So it actually maintains the, the, the stream bed then? The stream bed, yeah. yes. Yeah. And basically, that's great. you know, bottomless culverts, arch culverts, those kind of things, even bridges in some cases. But that's basically what that is intended to do. So it's a half pipe, basically. A half pipe, yeah, exactly. Oh, fantastic. And um, I don't know how far we are as far as um, 
can you tell I read the package? <laughs> I'm glad that makes me happy. <laughs> How how far along uh, are we as far as uh, uh, designing the new Bothell City Hall? And if we're and the reason I'm, where I'm going with this is is that going to be a green building? Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. Yeah. Good. I don't know what level we're going to try to achieve, but it's definitely going to meet one of the gold. gold. Oh, gold. Okay, yeah. Which is a pretty high level. Right. Okay. Because I'm I, I'm reading this. If 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 this is what we're striving for, then we ought to set the example. Uh, NEP 3-4, encourage the planting of suitable native trees, native vegetation. Just a, just a side note as I was reading through this. <clears throat> I'm wondering if there's any type of, um, anybody within the city that if there's a scout project for an Eagle Project or 4-H or anything of that nature, uh, it seems to me like something like this would be just a just a perfect project, you know, service project for them, senior, uh, high school senior service projects. I don't know if there's a, a way to get word out that we're striving for this as well. Well, actually, uh, you know, one of the features that we used to do a lot was the Sammamish Relief, and that was basically a replanting of our riverbank along the Sammamish River. Uh, that basically would provide trees to shade the river so it doesn't get as warm as it used to historically. And that's an ongoing process. We still have our, our – basically our surface water staff sets up annual get-togethers for people to come out and maintain and even plant new trees along there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those things that we actually are doing. But all those folks are more than welcome. And I know our surface water coordinator would be glad to see some young kids right. out there because they can wheel those wheelbarrows a lot better than we can. Yeah, yeah. And it's also just a great service project. Oh, yeah, well. they're awesome. Yeah, it's really yeah. fun. That's all I got for now. I've taken a lot of time. Thanks for the comments. Uh, Sam? I think at this time. Mike? <laughs> yeah, um, thanks. Uh, so are are we going? Well, I guess yeah. Any P forty one. Um, so uh, this is still about uh, reducing greenhouse gases. Um, so so this part may be naive on my part, but uh, for that first bullet point, well, well, in, in that whole paragraph, should we call out uh, CO two or methane? If, if if we're talking about minimizing greenhouse gas emissions. Because I, I, I saw yeah. the calling out for, for carbon monoxide and ozone, but I, I don't know how specific we wanted yeah, to get We can there. add probably any greenhouse gas emission we so desire. This is just basically language virtually word for word from the uh, uh, Keene County, countywide planning policy that I'm inserting in here. But we can add more if you'd like. I, I guess actually it's more of just my curiosity than what – how how do we pick? You know, what, what was – what motivated us to list uh, carbon monoxide and ozone, but not CO2 or methane? Boy, you know what? There's a whole group of experts who could get into a really good. Unfortunately, it's not. I'm not one of them. Um, oh. But you're absolutely right. Those are greenhouse gas emission uh, gases that maybe we could include. Although I'm a little bit worried about getting out the too much different from what the King County program is going to be, and this is kind of what they're identifying. So. I would hate for us to say, well, we're going to control carbon dioxide, some of these other things, when the program that's implemented by King County does not measure those 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 gases. But I'm willing to add something here. No, no, that's fine. It, it just surprised me just because, I mean, CO2 is the poster child of, of greenhouse gases. Yeah, yeah, carbon dioxide, um, yes, absolutely. And th then for, so for those bullets, so is that really just language that we're pulling from the county and we want to leave that? So well, that was change? my initial thought, was to, you know, basically be consistent with the countywide, countywide planning policies, which we have to do anyway, and not go too far afield from that. Okay. Because the um, a, a fourth bullet that jumped out at me that uh, would be promoting local jobs. So we talked about try, trying to reduce traffic and transit and how much people drive. Uh, you know, I, I have to drive about 25 miles every day. Um, I, I don't have a bus route that, that services it. You know, I, I would love to have a job in, you know, North Creek and, and shrink my commute. Uh, like I can tell you that would save a lot more, a lot more gasoline, a lot more greenhouse gas emissions than any other proposal that I'm reading about here. Yeah. So I, it, it might be a little bit unconventional, but, you know, if we just want to, it's the engineer and me thinking what's the most efficient way to reduce 
Uh, Hold that thought, and we'll put it in the urban design and the transportation elements. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mike. Good comments. Uh, just a couple of things, uh, Bruce. For clarification, I'm on any one, and there's a whole bunch of underlying text there, but then there's struck out text in. Are we adding all of that new language, or is that existing language from GMA? It's uh, basically the first, uh, the very first uh, two or three paragraphs of the natural environment element. Uh, shoot, I'm missing a page here. I have one more. I have one, one more when you're done. Yes, on any one, the idea would be to remove uh, quite a bit of this and add a, for a significant amount. Okay, so everything that's underlined is new. Yes. And then we're actually striking out some of the things that are new. Is is this a cut and paste? Oh, from I King see. County? There's some underlined there. Yes. No. In fact, uh, the underlined area that actually is struck through and underlined, you should just have a strike through there. Okay. So I'm that's sorry. existing language in the it current. Is. It is. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was I was understanding that that correctly. That's interesting. It underlined that. Hmm. I didn't know if you were just going around in circles trying to decide what you wanted to add and take out, and it, it all got <laughs> caught up in there. No, the only thing that going around in circles is my computer. <laughs> um, you know, a, a general comment, and I think it, it goes to, to some things that um, I think both Steve and, and Mike had, had presented, uh, and, it, and it has to do maybe with specificity. I, a lot of places we call out um, Chinook salmon or bull trout, we call out carbon monoxide and, and ozone, and I'm wondering whether uh, for the sake of future change over the next eight years before this is, is uh, revised again, that we provide ourselves a little bit broader context by not being so specific. We want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improve air quality. Whatever those gas emissions may be gives us room to address them. Same with endangered species because, you know, they may reintroduce I don't know, Arctic gray wolves or something in the next five years, hypothetically, and uh, we we have a little bit broader language in the natural environment section to, to address that. So my position would be as we go through and call the final language, if creating a little bit broader statement by taking out some of the specificity of specific species, specific zones of landslide area, specific greenhouse gas emissions, so on and so forth, might uh, provide this a, a little bit, um, I don't know, might be a little bit broader context for us. You know, that's a good point because we keep hearing rumors that the kokanee are going to be the next, uh, you know, fish that are listed underneath the Endangered Species Act. So, you, you know, um, blackberries and knotweed may be listed here before too long, and <laughs> I don't you know these are be. you know the opportunity for plant species also that would be listed yeah, on that endangered yeah. side, the three-legged frog or, or whatever. And my experience has been that new things always do get added, and some things do get taken off, uh, and the absence of specificity may be uh, more appropriate. So, when you're when you're going through. If there's the opportunity to seek that those those specifics out, Norway and Finn Hill, so to speak, you know we can we can uh, uh, maybe provide some more room. Okay, what I'll do is I'll I'll take a look at that. In some locations where we're actually making a specific call, such as the Wyra Eight mm -hmm. plan, it is about Chinook salmon. But in other locations, we could just say salmonid species, or or endangered yeah, species. Endangered, yeah, period. Endangered, threatened, or more mm -hmm. sensitive. Yes. Yeah. Um, I. Just, just my my position on that. Okay. Um, and I have to apologize. I'm going on um, the computer tonight because I did this on the flight up uh, last night. Um, just another clarification, and this is just my curiosity, and I hope you can help. We've talked a lot about um, there are. I think Bill, you presented five required elements of 
a comprehensive plan, and then we talk about there's required elements, and then these are additional. I I'm probably missed it somewhere along the line. What are the five required elements? <laughs> Land use, housing, transportation, capital facilities. Utilities. Utilities. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. It. Thanks. <laughs> sorry. I, I just I just wanted to, to be able to have that in context as I'm reading reading through stuff. Uh, let's see. So, okay. So this, I think I've already heard uh, uh, other commissioners raise this, and I do believe uh, it goes to, um, well, in general, uh, I think the, the goal is any P41, but the section is air quality and greenhouse gas reduction or climate change. And I, I think I uh, would like to see us somewhere really emphasize that while, yes, we want to improve air quality and, and a goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is an air quality element, what we're really talking about are things like uh, trip reduction, uh, intelligent transportation systems, um, you know, industrial land use, building code, building standards, uh, improved efficiencies in utility systems. So that they, you're, you're right that they're really going to show up in a lot of places. But while we see that in some of the text that you put into the boxes, I think it really does belong somewhere in this section because greenhouse gas emissions are a thing. Air quality is a piece of the natural environment. And when you're getting into how do you address that, there's really not a lot of natural environment code or critical area code mm -hmm. that really addresses the goal. So some way in the language, whether it's enhancing the, the, the goal language that, uh, that Mike discussed or maybe uh, somewhere in, in the text or even in the code itself, we could really emphasize that the city's strategy in doing that or the tactics that we're going to use are much more related to, you know, smart building design, low impact development, smart transportation systems, um, education, outreach, all those items that we, we would use elsewhere in the code or establish in code elsewhere. A more holistic list. Um, That's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah, or a more, more I, I didn't see it jump out at me that right, all absolutely. those opportunities are there to achieve the goal, but they really fit elsewhere. And yep, um, I gotcha. somewhere in the plan itself, that would be really, really helpful. Okay. Actually, I think this may be a good element to put that into. I was almost questioning, really, does it really belong in natural environment? And I can see the stretch to air quality, but it really has, you have a hard time writing mm -hmm. critical areas or natural environment code language to address those things. So, yeah, okay. Um, uh, we, we brought up the, uh, the uh, shoreline master plan, and uh, in the code language, uh, or in the, in the planning document language, it talks about um, the, you know, if there's a discrepancy between the, the comp plan and the shoreline plan, the shoreline plan will take precedent. And is that established? Is there an established precedence through WAC or through um, GMA that says, yes, you shall make the shoreline plan a higher value? than? Yes. In fact, it's both in the Growth Management Act and the Shoreline Mas Management Act. It okay. basically says... Within these certain areas, basically along the Sammamish River, North Creek, and mm -hmm. Swamp Creek, 200 feet, 100-year floodplain, mm -hmm. those areas, the Shoreline Master Program will be the document that takes over. This is kind of like a big overlay zone that okay. occurs there. So, yeah, it, there is a hierarchy there that uh, we can probably make a little more clear here if you'd like to do that. 
No, I, I just, I was, uh, if, if there's something elsewhere that establishes that precedent, I just wanted to make sure we were, uh, we were aware of how they fit and possibly clarification for the public would be great. Um, generally, I, I look through this and read through it and I'm, I'm pretty positive uh, on what's been presented. Uh, two things that, that linger with me. I think I brought this up uh, earlier. The, the opportunity for a good, um, a good read by fresh eyes for grammar might be, might be helpful. They're, they're, you know, it, it, when you're on a plane late at night, it's easy to pick those things out. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that staff, when they go through, will, will make that, uh, that concerted effort. The other is, as you mentioned, Bothell Cool. Um, and my understanding is that uh, we actually established a baseline inventory of carbon emissions from the city several years ago through we that did. program. We actually did mm -hmm. do a study that actually identified what the suspected levels were. Mm -hmm. Is that a tool or is that still something that would build on the greenhouse gas goals or portions? Well, or? and actually that's one of the reasons why I added it here because mm -hmm. I think it is a good tool for this community to use to help promote the whole idea behind the greenhouse gas emission program. So that we have that existing baseline that we, we do. draw from yep. moving forward. Yep. Great. So that's, that's all I have. Uh, just I know there's a couple of brief comments that folks would like to make based on discussion so far. So if we could keep it short, that would be great. Just, thanks. Just one uh, quick follow-up. On uh, any 10, Bruce, the note mentions King County countywide planning policies requires the inclusion of policies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to recognize climate change. So a couple just quick questions. First of all, because we are in King and Snohomish County, does Snohomish County have a similar type of requirement for uh, these type of policy inclusions as King County does? No, they don't. It's there is a discussion about it, but it's much more broad um, and doesn't have near the specificity as the King County countywide planning policies. So then I saw that on uh, page NE12, it looks like that kind of uh, 52 and 53 were kind of the reflection of those uh, policies around climate change where we're, we're, we're going to at least add something and we're saying the count. For, for, I, I'm assuming, and I think Bill kind of mentioned this at the uh, several weeks ago, we really don't have the right to kind of negotiate this. I mean, when, we're a part of the King County. King County says we're going to do this, we're going to do it. Is that correct? Or That's is correct, it? yes. Yeah. And so I see 52 and 53 as kind of our response to that policy requirement. Am I, am I right? Precisely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mike? Uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, any P48 continue to promote recycling. Uh, can we also call out compost? You know, I know I live in a, um, uh, an apartment, uh, apartment complex that doesn't have compost, and every time I have food waste, having to throw that out makes me sad. Including compost, in other words, is kind of what you'd like to have in there. Yes, okay. yes. So both, both recycling and and um, co composting. Um, uh, another point, uh, something that uh, Peter brought up about the, the uh, section on NE10, air quality and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, I mean, I, I'd have a preference to actually split those into two separate things. Uh, I, I think that greenhouse gas emissions is, is a, it's a very important issue, but it's a different issue than air quality, and the solutions may pull us in pretty different directions. Like we may find maybe the most effective way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is to buy CO2 on a cap and trade market. And that, you know, like there may be solutions there that have nothing to do with, with local air quality. And I'm just concerned if we couple them in the same section that we may be pulled, in, in, um, pulled away from some potentially very efficient solutions. Okay. Uh, what I'm hearing is you'd kind of like on policy, proposed policy NEP 40, on page any 11 that policy would become two you'd have an air quality component as well as a greenhouse gas component yeah you'd like to kind of go that direction yeah. i'm just making sure i yeah that, that that's my fr okay I, I i want to give the greenhouse gas emissions its own its own special attention its own i don't want it to get sort of tucked in and hidden in a sort of a side note on on something else and then, 
and any P52, um, when we say to support climate change reduction goals, does that does that allude to something specific? I mean, is there a specific county regulation that we're talking about? Well, it's basically it's the county King County program that would be basically supporting that that effort. Um, but is there so, just the the phrase is very ambiguous. I mean, when I read it, I don't know. I could interpret that to mean a lot of different things, and I, I didn't know if there was a like when we looked at signs from the highway, the, the, uh, uh, there was a very specific statewide program that we were piggybacking on, and and we used that to defer a lot of very sticky situations and decisions. Is there a similar arrangement here? Is there some s similar? Because uh, just the the phrase climate change reduction goals, um, that's just very ambiguous. And, okay. And, uh, if if that's clarified by some other uh, county organization or, or statewide set of rules, that that may save us some some, some head scratching down the road. You know, there's so many efforts in this arena that it's really hard to say which one we're going to participate in. Let me do a little bit of research and see if there's some overall broad term that I can identify to you because. Who knows? We may be participating in a state program. We may be participating in King County, Snohomish County. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of options there. So um, let me see if I can find something for you there. Oh, okay, thanks. Let me just jump in real quick and say that that, um, Bruce, that <coughs> that came to my mind as well, that if we talk about reduction goals, I start to think about metrics, and I start to think about what's the current measurement now, and then the desired metric in the future. And uh, so, if you could do a little bit of research as to what those goals are and how, because I'm just I, I want us to be careful not to kind of open ourselves up to some type of commitment, and we don't really know what we're signing up for. Well, I can tell you there are some really definitive goals, a certain percentages of reduction and things like that out there. Uh, I'm a little nervous about putting this in our plan, but I can report back to you on those specific goals. I, so you can I, I, I kind of took it that way, and I saw it that way. So right. I didn't push it too hard, but I did see this, the point that Commissioner Small But I think it's up. a good thing for you to have that background information, certainly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Bruce. Um, looking to you still, what would you like us to be ready to do next? Well, the idea behind this, this will, this will, of course, be continued as our normal course. This will come back to you on March the 12th. And the idea behind that, that would be your second look at this. And hopefully I will have addressed all of the uh, concerns you have and ide ideas. And then after that, uh, the, the second review, perhaps we can get it all finished up and we're on our way to the next element. Of course, so, we have another, we'll have another element in between time, too. But, uh, sure. So just a point of clarification, we will continue the public hearing on the natural environment portions of the comp plan? Well, actually, this is all just one public hearing, so I think you can actually continue it. Oh, no, that's not the case? Oh, that's all right. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Sorry. Just um, to clarify, um, we will need a motion from you tonight to continue, as you stated, Peter, the natural environment element um, to March 12th. Is that date certain? And um, each time we bring a different element to you, we'll have you make that same motion to continue it to a two-week two day. So, so each element represents its own public hearing? Uh, it's, uh, it's all one big public hearing, but it ensures that we, we continue each element um, specifically because we're hearing them separately. So uh, you know, I think Bill and I have talked quite a bit, and, and I think that's the, probably the safest way to go in terms of process. Thank you. So before we go there, if I could, um, I do have one one question, comment on uh, page NE14. It's NEA14. Continue the Bothell CO2 OL greenhouse gas reduction program and expand the program where feasible. My question is, at what cost? I think there really needs to be a balance between, um, kind of a balanced approach between the, you know, properly stewarding the environment as well as uh, sensible um, development as well. And, 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 and that, doesn't, that doesn't say anything in there to me. Mm. Okay. Uh, 
Is it mostly the concern you have is about the exp the potential expansion of the program? Is it simpler just to say continue that greenhouse gas reduction program? It's an existing program of the city house, so. Um, yes, uh, the, the the simple answer is yes. Uh, the complicated the complicated answer is uh, I don't even know what the program is. And oh, so, okay. And so, uh, you know, essentially, what it is that the city of Bothell created its own little program that has some strategies as well as some goals to meet, and it includes anything from buying more fuel efficient vehicles for the city fleet to implementing certain levels of, of green building programs identified that we're going to do the city uh, hall as a gold, lead gold standard. Mm -hmm. Those are It's a whole bunch of those things like that, as well as a l really large public uh, education component. So those things are kind of what that program is about. Would you be able to distribute that to uh, I can get the commissioners? Lot, I can get you lots of information. Mm -hmm. on well, that. I know that there's sort of a, a comprehensive uh, planning document around that or some type well, actually, of yeah and, yeah and a really good web page yeah one of, one I think that might be great if you could uh, enhance our education through the link um, that would be good I'm sure we can all hunt and peck on city of Bothell's website to find it too but that might help in in the next time we get together and I you know from a goal standpoint I think it's it's uh, it's valid for us to consider all of this within a balance and uh, maybe uh, uh, having a broader statement in the goals to ensure that we're not um, we're not uh, as you first mentioned uh, countering our goals for growth so so with that take a motion for continuing the public hearing on the natural environment element in implementing critical area regulations Natural environment element and implementing critical areas regulations. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And if you could include the date in that motion, please. Uh, March 12th. March, March 12th. 12th. <laughs> March 12th. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Note that it passes with all commissioners that are present. At this time, no study session, no old business. Is there a report from staff? There Gary? is. Uh, last week um, we had asked the commission to uh, uh, commissioners to think about whether they might be willing to serve on the capital facilities committee, if you recall. And uh, I'm, I'm back to ask you if you've considered that and if anybody is willing to take that task on. We have. I kind of took mm -hmm. that one later. Yeah. And so do we, when do you have to know that today? Um, yeah. I think Bill's preference would be at least this week so that he, he can report on who the, the commission representative will be. But if it's something that you could email to Bill and I, that would be, that would be great. That would work fine. Okay. So let me just say we're very close. Okay. We'll have something for you, an email from either uh, Commissioner Batchwell or myself by the end of the week, by the, by the end of business on Friday. Perfect. That would be fantastic. Thank you. That's it. Any reports from members? Sorry, I didn't hear anything what you just said. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, it's on now. So, yes, we will have something on uh, the Planning Commission representative to the Capital Finance Committee for you um, from either uh, Chairman Batchuelo or myself by end of business on Friday. Any reports from members? Motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, gentlemen. See you next week. Thank you.